objectify <laughs> men. Yeah. <Okay. laughs> Finally pushing feminism forward. Hundreds of backward, years. literally backward, but <laughs> yeah, sideways, maybe. So today we are talking about a bold move in the direction of celebrity brands. And one of the things I think celeb and personal brands get shat on for is going into the business space. And a lot of people are like, who are you to make that sort of pivot? And I would argue, who are you not to? Today we live in an attention economy. So if you have people's attention, that is literally how you profit. And it's how you monetize because that is the thing that most brands need. So you can have the best widget in the world that solves all of people's problems. But if you cannot get the attention of people, then your widget is, is dead in the water because today it is not enough to take out a couple ads on television. Like the way to get into the zeitgeist and in front of people is to build the audience and to get the attention. And you have to use the people who have the attention already. So what I actually want to know is who whispered in Chris Hemsworth's ear about this and said, this is my idea, but I'm going to use you as my brand. Or was he really behind this? But I will take you guys into the world of Chris. I'm ready. So, Let's go. A reader actually sent me this. It's called Center. If your first reaction is, well, this isn't new, then yes, every single business is not new when it comes to fitness. <laughs> what's brilliant about this is he's doing it anyway. And what's different is, well, first of all, hi. But Wait. here's where it's capitalizing off the attention is you basically get to work out with his trainers. And what makes this different than all of the rest of us who are <laughs> on the bottom of the totem pole being like, pay attention to my fitness thing is that he already had attention. If you think about the way in which we approach celebrity culture, like when you grab a magazine, Hillary, like how many times are you like, I want to know how Miranda Kerr's skin looks the way it does? Or like, how did she get her hair like that? Or like, we all want to know the secrets behind the aesthetics, the Absolutely. styles, the maintenance and what goes into this. And 90% of the time, we don't want to do it because we're like, that sucks. We just want to eat ice cream and stare at you and then wonder how you did it. It's a better way to live overall. <laughs> I mean, you sweat less, which is nice. Go on. Depends <laughs> how much ice cream you have. <laughs> uh, what's really smart about what he's done here is like, it goes train, eat, live, like all of the different things that would help you live a optimized life and a healthy life and all the things that he appears to be known for. And it says everything you need in one spot. So it's a really beautiful landing page. It's really clear. I think the smarter thing is strategy. So here's what I want you to see. Meet the team. You have Chris, you have uh, his kickboxing coach, you have Hemsworth may wield the hammer, but it's Luke who cracks the whip of the trainer. You have the gymnastics guy. Like you have this whole team that he's assembled that's, that's so responsible cool. for Who's the eye patch him? guy? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> eye patch guy. Ooh. Boxing. Of um, course. That's awesome. What I think is so smart about this is it leverages brand in a way that's supremely functional and useful in the real world and allows it to add value to the people who are paying attention in a way that is outside of his traditional arena, which is acting. So he's not sitting there being like, let me teach you how to be a better actor. He's not even teaching you how to work out. He's just saying, let me expose you to my team and what it takes to be as fit and like have this lifestyle. If this is what you're interested, let me take you behind the curtain. I totally agree with you. And this is something that you and I were talking about when we were discussing this episode is also that uh, at home fitness and like workout videos, the workout video industry has essentially been rebranded into what we're seeing right now in 2019, which is like, it's not video fitness. It's fitness everywhere. Like you can access it from your phone and all your devices. Like look at the sexy design. When in reality, like it's, it's workout videos. Like that is what it is. It's designed to sort of compete with the Peloton and the mirror, which is again, the like easy to access home workouts via this kind of creepy mirror, which the government is probably also using to spy on you. Whereas he's really about the full scale. Here are the experts that I know and trust. And as you say, like leveraging his brand to create this brand and kind of directly connect people with the people who allegedly make him look the way he does, which is great. Just, they're doing a great job. Please keep well, it up. It's, it's also maximizing on opportunity. And I think something that a lot of people in the online business space are uncomfortable with. One of the things we always preach is giving value first. Mm. And this to me is the epitome of that, but in a very different field because he has done 
ads. He's done commercials. He has done TV. He has movies. You have seen this guy over and over again transform himself into something and inadvertently demonstrate expertise, but also build trust and awareness mm. and been himself, right? If you got it, flaunt it. He's not pretending he's not attractive. The ads that have been targeting me now with this, it's watching him on Instagram live go for a jog with his trainers on the beach. Now, if it was anyone else, you'd be like, douche. But because it's Chris, you're like, <laughs> I would like to sit here and watch you run on the beach with your trainers. That's the other point too. So what I like about Chris Hemsworth is he's so attractive and he's so fit and he's like, he's this rad Australian lifestyle with his like super hot brothers and his like super and hot wife. older wife. Hot. Yeah. And is and is, there's just like pictures of him and his kids on the beach, like, you know, surfing and doing all these things. But you don't hate him for it. It's not annoying. He's like very bro -y. He seems very down to earth. And he's managed to kind of strike this balance where I think some actors, were they to try to create something like this, like it would just hit a bum note. I think it sounds like he recognized he had a moment in his brand that he had a really unique opportunity and had enough trust built to do something like this. It's funny, like from a wellness, like health website standpoint, there are some key elements missing. There's no before and after. He has no testimonials except himself. It breaks a lot of rules, but at the same time, because the trust is already built with the face of the brand, Chris Hemsworth, you don't need it, which is really, I think, very interesting. I'll be intrigued to see where this goes and if yeah. it sells and makes waves. Yes, I completely agree. And I didn't even notice that, but you're so right. It's a matter of knowing like where you are in terms of brand sophistication and what the trust is you've already built because he has spent the last several years building that. So no. much trust built. So <laughs> much trust. Trust. Yeah. <laughs> this, I trust him so much. <laughs> anyway, go on. We are the worst. So I think that there are a lot of celebrity brands that get a bad rap for moving into the business world or it feels like it's left field and it shouldn't. And I think that's what I like so much about this particular product is that it doesn't feel out of left field. It feels really cohesive. It is very consistent and it feels like it capitalized off of something he's probably asked for a lot. So thinking of your own business, thinking, you know, viewers who are, are watching this and wondering like, what should I do instead of pushing into the world, the thing you want to sell, like think about what people are asking you naturally mm. and what might not be so obvious, but it's like sitting in your inbox. <laughs> yeah. And I think also just one final point too, is normally this stuff like celebrities, celebrity men, what is your workout routine? What do you eat? Is usually reserved for something like men's health magazine. So essentially like other people were probably profiting off of learning about his routines and how he did things and all this stuff. And these trainers are probably profiting off the fact that there was pictures of him on Instagram. So this also finds a way to kind of bring the cash flow and attention and kind of effort back into his brand instead of kind of spreading all of this around. It's sort of bringing it into one key focal place that he yes. benefits from as well as, you know, bringing in all of these wonderful trainers to highlight and all of this stuff and helping people kind of change their approach to fitness, food, and mindfulness that way. So that was an interesting point too. It was a very savvy business move. Not doing this out of the goodness of his heart. He might be, but it is part of really um, giving people a place to go beyond just like an article yep. or an interview, you know? Yep. And you can have both. You can profit and do things out of the good of your heart. They're not mutually exclusive. That's so true. And there's a really great article. If you guys haven't checked it out on, in Forbes, it came out a couple months ago on The Rock and how he has done something similar in, he has now created this like social media empire. And if you want him to do promo on a movie that he's a part of, like as an actor, you actually have to pay him to promote the stuff because his brand is so much bigger than most of these studios. Yeah. And so it's a brilliant reappropriation of the attention. And I think this is what I was trying to say in the beginning about the, the, the beauty and the difference of the attention economy. There was not a world where this was possible when movies first started. You were a toy, you were an agent of the studio. Now we have the power, right? Like the actor in this case is like, oh, you want my brand? Great. I am going to charge you for the attention that I have accrued and I have owned, which is the same thing all of you guys are doing with your email list or with your Instagram following or wherever it is that you are building an audience. Like that is your asset is the attention. So mm -hmm. respect it. 
eat it. That's the other thing that you mentioned about Chris that I really like. And I know we're talking a lot about how he looks, but he has done a really beautiful job of being authentic in his brand yeah, and being very absolutely. real. His growiness isn't douchey because he's not that douchey. He's very real. He's kind of a family guy, which is like surprising, but makes you like him more. But there are certain parts of him that like when you are authentic in the way that you show up in the world, it is rewarded with people's attention. And you mm -hmm. contrast that to like the Ty Lopez and you're like, that's not real. You don't have a Lambo and like all the other things. It's not like there are all these people that are doing that in our world that are like, look at my millions. Like <laughs> once who's a millionaire is talking like that. Okay. And so that is having true. that authenticity and that connection with your audience and having the one-on-one -on -one where you're talking directly and you're owning the conversation. That's what's so important here. We also saw Jeff Bezos do it. So this whole scandal happened. How did he handle it? He posted on freaking medium himself. Like what? Yeah, that last heard him. that last line, by the way, was great. Uh, I have to say, like, say what you will about Jeff Bezos. He was basically like, I decline like the blackmail offer. I'd rather kick this log over and see what crawls out. And I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> basically, basically saying like, I am so rich. What are you going to do to me? Like, and, I, and, and I, again, criticism of Jeff Bezos criticism of Amazon all warranted but I love a power move especially in language and I'm like oh I'm gonna I'm just like writing it down to use it at some point it's like that moment in Mad Men where one of the guys is in the elevator and he's like I feel sorry for you and Don Draper goes I don't think about you at all and it's just I just love moments like that because it's just like cool and creates this like internal moment regardless of criticism when powerful people make powerful statements and do powerful things Similarly, like it is great when people like Chris Hemsworth, who is by all means a powerful person, stand in that power of owning his brand and his power to connect the whole world to these amazing trainers and putting together something, a really beautiful app and a really awesome experience for folks. Like I think those are sort of two sides of the same coin, yeah. except Chris Hemsworth is a little more to the positive uh, and Bezos is a little more to the fuck you. But it's the greater point of like the gatekeepers are gone. Yeah. And it is now in our hands how you want to handle your brand, your relationship with your audience, and that you control the narrative. And this is a tremendous place to be. And it's a huge paradigm shift for what every other marketer and business that came before has ever had to encounter in their life. Yeah, that's so true. That's why we're here. <laughs> All right, you guys, to bring you pictures of Chris Helmsworth and respect the hustle and inspirational talks. Thank you guys for watching this week. I am Margot Aaron. This I'm Hillary Weiss. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Margot Aaron. I'm Hillary Weiss. And we'll see you in two weeks. This is Hamya.